Why do we fall ill? Infectious diseases Based on the length of the disease, we know that there are two types. Acute, that is short duration, and chronic, that is long duration. Based on the cause of the disease, we know that there are two types. Immediate, that is the main cause, and contributory, that is other related causes. Based on how the disease spreads, we know that there are two types. Infectious, spread to others, and non-infectious, that don't spread. Since it is the infectious diseases that spread, let us take a closer look at how that happens. Infectious diseases How do they spread? Virus, bacteria, fungus, protozoa, Worms Diseases caused by virus are Cold, Influenza, Dengue, AIDS Diseases caused by bacteria are Typhoid, Cholera, Tuberculosis, Anthrax Diseases caused by fungus are Skin infections Diseases caused by protozoa are Malaria, Kala Azar Diseases caused by worms are Intestinal infections Elephantiasis We definitely do not want these agents to win the fight against our body. To fight your enemy, you should know your enemy well, right? Only then you can know its weakness and where and how to attack and win. And that is what our scientists have done. Three cheers to science and our amazing scientists. Each of these agent families has certain special characteristics. For example, viruses live inside the host cell, bacteria do not. Viruses multiply quickly, bacteria multiply quickly too. And that is why diseases caused by different agents have to be treated differently. Agents of infectious diseases you must have heard of or even taken antibiotics at some point. Antibiotics are specifically used to treat infections caused by bacteria. How do they work? Ah, that is so simple and absolutely brilliant. Mission Bacteria Antibiotics block the process of building a cell wall. All bacteria cells have a cell wall. Can a cell survive if it doesn't have a cell wall? No. Without a cell wall, the bacteria cell dies. Simple and brilliant. Oh, but wait. What about our body cells? What if they die too? Our body has animal cells, which have no cell wall. Haha, <laughs> got you worried there for a moment, right? So, the antibiotic does not harm our body cells at all. It just kills the bacteria. So, mission bacteria accomplished. Means of spread of infectious diseases If a particular agent is responsible for a disease, it means that the agent has to move from one organism to the other to spread the disease. Right? Ok, read that sentence one more time. That means the disease is spreadable, or you can say communicable. This is ninth grade science, so let's use the proper words that scientists use. How do you think an infectious agent can spread through air? For that, the agent has to come out into the air from the body. So, it can spread when the infected person coughs or sneezes. Look at figure 13.2 in your textbook on page 183 and understand how infections spread through air. As you can see, airborne diseases do not actually need any contact to spread. Just being in the area around a sick person is enough, even for hours after the sick person has left the area. When the infected person sneezes or coughs in an open environment, the droplets are released in the air. The infected air is inhaled by a healthy person or a non-infected person 
for now we can say this is how tuberculosis tb spreads so tb is a communicable or infectious disease spread can happen when we come in contact with bodily fluids of an infected person means of direct spread excretions saliva skin blood others excretions through flies and dust mixed with drinking water not washing hands properly after cleaning blood through transfusions and insect bites through saliva by sharing food or kissing through skin by skin contact handshakes pots etc by touching clothes towels etc others sexual act or breastfeeding manifestations of infectious diseases okay so the microorganisms or microbes enter the body then where does it go well sometimes that depends on the point of entry it can be through air through food or other ways if it is through air it enters the lungs if it is through food it enters the stomach intestines and liver if it's through other ways it enters other organs that is one way of looking at it but actually once the microbes enter the body they can go pretty much anywhere look at this the microbe of hiv that enters through the sex organs travels to lymph nodes the microbe of malaria that enters the blood goes to the liver and rbc the microbe of brain fever enters the blood and goes to the brain the symptoms of the disease depend on the target organ where the microbe finally goes to target organ lungs the symptoms are cough and breathlessness if the target organ is liver then the symptoms are jaundice if the target organ is brain then the symptoms are headache vomiting fits and unconsciousness if you like our videos do share them and subscribe to our channel if you want awesome quizzes write to us keep watching and keep learning with walnut